Sometime in February 2017, the Deputy President traveled to London and he went to a hospital in London where his brother was admitted in ICU. When he arrived the next day, he prevailed upon his brother to execute a will. That was on the 17th of February, 2020, uh, 2017. In that trip, there is no evidence at all that he tried to talk to doctors or physicians who are looking after his own brother. After this visit, he walked away. And seven days later... Mr. Speaker, I rise to raise an objection. Can I proceed? Mr. Speaker, we owe the Deputy President very elementary decency. We owe it to the deputy president to be basically decent in these proceedings. I want to know whether counsel at the bar, one, can adduce this kind of evidence that is not contained in any evidentiary material before the Senate. I want to know which ground in the 11 grounds in the impeachment motion is this evidence from the bar supporting. I repeat, Mr. Speaker, we owe the Deputy President the most basic decency. I object. Senior Council Orango, those apartments, are they contained? They are, they are contained. They are all here. They and refer all, to the document. Volume 4. I, I am not referring because if I have got to refer to every document, it will take a lot of time. And I have only 30 minutes. Uh, if you look at Volume 4 uh, of this document on public participation, uh, from page... page uh, The volume 4 of the National Assembly. Of the National Assembly. Pages? Pages 114 to... In fact, it is the Deputy President who has, re who has also relied on that will. It's also part of his defense. Yes. Uh, and in fact, this, this page is also called Tend the Will. And the Deputy President is the one who is relying on this will. Uh, the death certificate is contained on page 119. And it shows the only person who attended the disease, the brother of the deputy president at that time, was his daughter, was the only person uh, present. And then there is the will. And in the documents on page 128, and this is why I was raising this matter, on page 128, there's a letter by Mr. Madenge and Mr. Njoroge Rigeru, who together with Mr. Rigadi Gachagua were the joint will ex executors. And they are complaining about the conduct and action of the deputy president as an executor of the will and a family member of the late Nderitu Gachagua. On page 129, there, and it says, from bank statements to this, for this account seen by us, you transferred some funds from this account to other persons as follows. On the date on when Deritu Gachagua died on the 24th, the deputy president was already withdrawing money. On the day he died, on the day he died, and that day when he died, he was there only with his daughter. And then they say, on the 19th of May, 2017, 
again another money was withdrawn and paid to Mrs. Wamunyuro Investment Limited. This story, you will find it in the documentation. And part of it is what Mr. Njomo was saying. Counsel for Deputy President, just have your seat. When your time comes, you'll be able to make the rebuttals. Proceed, uh, Senior Counsel. Okay. I'm a minister of... Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I respect your direction. I'm willing to take a seat right away, but just to point out something. The document you are being referred to is the document you held in abeyance. No, because no. it was given to us no, later no, no, no. for purposes of no, our no. consideration. That's number one. Number two, Mr. Speaker, you remember that my learned colleague talked about how my client traveled to London, how without talking to any doctor. These are factual claims. Mr. Speaker, they are just coming from the bar. Mr. Speaker, number three, the opening statement speaks to the motion and the grounds in the motion. I beseech this House direct that parties restrict themselves to the motion and the grounds in the motion. The facts you are now being uh, referred to have no basis in the motion 